The Smith & Wesson Model 10, first introduced in 1899 as the Military and Police or M&P revolver, holds the title of the most widely produced revolver in history. Its longevity and widespread adoption by military law enforcement and civilians cement its legacy as one of the most influential handguns ever made. Over its century-long history, the Model 10 has been at the center of some of the most notable shootings and pivotal moments in firearms evolution. By exploring its history, technical development, and documented involvement in real-life shootings, we can better understand how this revolver became a cornerstone of law enforcement, a battlefield tool, and a trusted companion for civilians. The Model 10 traces its roots to the dawn of modern revolver design. In 1899, Smith & Wesson introduced what would later become known as the M&P revolver. Initially chambered in 38 long Colt, it was designed to address the shortcomings of older black powder cartridges. The revolver soon transitioned to 38 Special, a cartridge designed to improve ballistics and reliability. This shift marked the beginning of a relationship between the Model 10 and law enforcement, as police departments sought a reliable, accurate, and easy-to-maintain firearm. The adoption of smokeless powder further enhanced the revolver's reputation, making it more durable and practical for daily use. By the 1920s, the M&P revolver had become the standard-issue sidearm for many U.S. police departments. Its robust frame, straightforward operation, and effective 38 special round made it a natural choice for law enforcement officers tasked with responding to the growing challenges of organized crime and urban violence. The revolver's versatility didn't go unnoticed by the military. During World War I, it saw service with both U.S. and Allied forces, leading Smith & Wesson to develop military variants. These adaptations culminated in the Victory model during World War II, a version chambered in 38 Smith & Wesson and issued to soldiers, air crew, and military police. The revolver's performance in extreme conditions, rain, mud, and sand, earned it a reputation for reliability, even in the chaos of battle. During the Prohibition era, the Model 10 became synonymous with law enforcement efforts against organized crime. One of its most notable appearances occurred during the Kansas City Massacre, a violent attempt by gangsters to free a captured bank robber. FBI agents and police armed with Model 10 revolvers exchanged gunfire with the criminals in a chaotic shootout that left four officers and the suspect dead. The event highlighted the revolver's role in high-stakes confrontations. Bernard Gutz's use of a Smith & Wesson Model 10 during a New York City subway shooting remains one of the most controversial cases of self-defense in American history. When confronted by four men who he claimed were attempting to rob him, Gutz fired multiple shots, wounding all four. The Model 10 became a central piece of evidence in the trial, which sparked national debates about self-defense and firearm ownership. While semi-automatics were already gaining traction, many law enforcement officers carried revolvers like the Model 10 during the infamous FBI Miami shootout. The event involving FBI agents and two heavily armed bank robbers exposed the limitations of revolvers in extended engagements. Despite being outgunned, agents using Model 10 revolvers managed to neutralize the suspects, though the encounter ultimately prompted a shift towards semi-automatic pistols in law enforcement. The Model 10's straightforward design made it a popular choice for civilians, resulting in numerous documented self-defense incidents. A Texas farmer used his Model 10 to fend off an armed intruder in 1972, demonstrating the revolver's reliability under pressure. A retired Chicago police officer successfully defended his home in 1998, using his personal Model 10 to stop a pair of burglars. During World War II, the Smith & Wesson Victory model, which is essentially a militarized Model 10, was issued to Allied forces. Chambered in 38 Smith & Wesson, it became a secondary weapon for soldiers, air crew, and military police. Reports from the Pacific Theater highlight its use in close quarters combat, where its simplicity and reliability were critical. After the war, surplus Victory models found their way into civilian hands and police departments, further entrenching the revolver's role in post-war law enforcement and self-defense. As semi-automatic pistols gained popularity in the late 20th century, 
the Model 10 began to lose its status as the dominant law enforcement sidearm. However, it remained in service for decades due to its reputation for reliability and ease of use. The revolver also became a mainstay in developing nations, where its durability and low maintenance requirements made it ideal for police forces with limited resources. Collectors and enthusiasts kept the Model 10 relevant, valuing its historical significance and timeless design. Special editions and commemorative models kept the revolver in production, ensuring its legacy endured even as the industry shifted toward polymer-framed semi-automatics. The Model 10's simplicity has always been one of its greatest strengths. Its fixed sights, robust frame, and double-action trigger system provided users with a firearm that was easy to operate and maintain. Smith & Wesson made subtle updates over the years, such as improved metallurgy, better finishes, and ergonomic grips. These changes enhance the revolver's durability without straying from its original design. This commitment to consistency allowed the Model 10 to remain relevant even as other firearms evolved around it. The Model 10's influence extends beyond its mechanical design. It became an enduring symbol of law enforcement during the mid-20th century, appearing in countless movies, TV shows, and books. This cultural presence reinforced its identity as a reliable and trustworthy firearm. Additionally, the revolver's involvement in pivotal moments, such as the Prohibition era, World War II, and the FBI Miami shootout, cemented its place in history as a firearm that shaped the outcomes of major events. The Smith & Wesson Model 10, a revolver synonymous with American law enforcement throughout the 20th century, has found a second life as a staple in the civilian surplus market. Once the backbone of police departments across the United States, these revolvers are now sought after by collectors, enthusiasts, and budget-conscious shooters alike. Police trade-in programs have made these iconic firearms accessible, offering civilians a chance to own a reliable revolver with historical significance at an affordable price. Introduced in 1899 as the M&P revolver, the Smith & Wesson Model 10 became the standard issue sidearm for countless police departments across the United States. Chambered in 38 Special, it offered a balance of power, reliability, and ease of use that made it ideal for officers in the field. By the mid-20th century, the Model 10 was the sidearm of choice for law enforcement officers, dealing with everything from routine patrols to high-stakes shootouts. For decades, this revolver symbolized law enforcement, appearing in the hands of beat cops in cities and small towns alike. Its simple, robust design ensured it could withstand years of hard use, often passed from one generation of officers to the next within departments. However, by the late 20th century, semi-automatic pistols began to replace revolvers as the standard sidearm for police forces. The shift was driven by the need for higher magazine capacities and faster reload times, especially in the wake of incidents like the 1986 FBI Miami shootout. This transition left police departments with surplus Model 10s, many of which were sold to firearms dealers and eventually made their way into civilian hands. When police departments upgrade their standard issue sidearms, they often participate in trade-in programs with firearms manufacturers or dealers. These programs allow departments to exchange their old service weapons, such as the Model 10, for credit toward new firearms. The trade-in revolvers are then inspected, refurbished if necessary, and resold to civilians through gun shops or surplus dealers. For civilians, these trade-in revolvers represent an opportunity to purchase a piece of history at a fraction of the cost of a brand new firearm. Many of these revolvers show signs of holster wear or cosmetic blemishes from years of service, but their internal mechanisms are often well-maintained, as police firearms are typically subjected to regular inspection and maintenance. For collectors, owning a police trade-in Model 10 is like holding a piece of history. These revolvers have a story to tell, having served on the hips of officers who patrolled America's streets during pivotal moments in history. Some trade-in revolvers may even bear department markings or serial numbers that trace back to specific agencies, adding to their historical value. One of the biggest advantages of purchasing a police trade-in Model 10 is its affordability. While new revolvers can cost upwards of several hundred dollars, trade-in models are often priced significantly lower, making them an attractive option for budget-conscious buyers. 
This affordability doesn't come at the expense of reliability, as these revolvers are built to last and often require minimal maintenance to remain operational. The Model 10's reputation for reliability is well-earned. Its robust steel frame, simple double-action, single-action trigger, and fixed sights make it a straightforward and dependable firearm. For those who need a reliable home defense weapon or a revolver for recreational shooting, a trade-in Model 10 offers peace of mind. While the Model 10 is no longer the primary choice for law enforcement, it remains a versatile firearm for civilian use. Its 38 special chambering offers manageable recoil, making it suitable for shooters of all skill levels. Additionally, the Model 10's compatibility with a wide range of ammunition types, from standard pressure rounds to more powerful plus P loads, adds to its utility. For collectors, trade-in Model 10 revolvers represent an opportunity to own a firearm with historical and cultural significance. Many of these revolvers bear the holster wear and scratches of years of service, which collectors often see as a badge of honor. The ability to trace a revolver back to a specific police department or era further enhances its appeal. For individuals looking for an affordable, reliable revolver, police trade-ins offer exceptional value. These firearms are often priced lower than comparable new revolvers, making them an excellent choice for first-time buyers or those on a tight budget. The simplicity and reliability of the Model 10 make it an ideal choice for home defense. Trade-in revolvers provide an economical option for homeowners who want a trusted firearm for personal protection without spending a fortune. While police trade-in revolvers are generally well-maintained, there are a few factors buyers should consider. Condition, expect cosmetic wear, such as holster marks or scratches, but ensure the revolver's internal components are in good working order. Most reputable dealers inspect and test trade-ins before resale. Department markings. Some trade-in Model 10s feature markings or engravings from the departments that issued them. These details can add historical value for collectors. Bore and cylinder. Check for signs of excessive wear or corrosion in the bore and cylinder. Revolvers that have seen heavy use may require minor repairs, but most trade-ins are ready to shoot out of the box. The availability of police trade-in Model 10 revolvers ensures that this iconic firearm remains accessible to new generations of shooters. By purchasing a trade-in revolver, civilians not only gain a reliable and affordable firearm, but also help preserve the legacy of a revolver that served as a cornerstone of law enforcement for much of the 20th century. These revolvers carry the weight of history, stories of officers walking their beats, responding to emergencies, and maintaining peace in their communities. By transitioning into civilian hands, the Model 10 continues to serve a new purpose, whether as a collector's item, a self-defense tool, or a reliable range companion. Police trade in Smith & Wesson Model 10 revolvers are more than just firearms. They are artifacts of a bygone era in law enforcement. Their affordability, reliability, and historical significance make them a valuable addition to any firearm collection or a practical option for those seeking a dependable revolver on a budget. As these revolvers move from duty holsters to civilian ownership, they bridge the gap between the past and present, ensuring that the legacy of the Model 10 continues to resonate with a new generation of enthusiasts and everyday users. Whether for history, utility, or nostalgia, a police trade-in Model 10 offers far more than meets the eye. The Smith & Wesson Model 10 has been a silent witness to over a century of history, from the trenches of World War I to the streets of 20th century America. Its role in both offensive and defensive shootings reflects its versatility, reliability, and enduring appeal. While modern pistols dominate today's market, the Model 10 remains a symbol of a bygone era when revolvers were the backbone of military, law enforcement, and civilian arsenals. For collectors, enthusiasts, and historians, the Model 10 is more than just a firearm. It's a piece of living history that continues to capture the imagination of those who appreciate its remarkable story. Make sure to subscribe to the Skullcrush channel for more firearms documentaries. And if you're looking for premium holsters and accessories, visit skullcrush.com. Hit subscribe and stay tuned for the next video.